have for the last five or six years, I've had Parkinson's disease and it's hard for me to come up with words. Judith Unger is my grandmother, but when I was two, I couldn't pronounce that. So I've always called her Nene. This is the story of how she escaped persecution in Europe with her family, came to the U.S. as a refugee, and went on to help countless other people. Hi, Joshua. My name is Judith Unger. Hi, I'm Jackie Unger. I'm uh, Judith's husband. I was born in 1939. Judith was born in October of 1946. I was born in Budapest, Hungary, where my parents lived before and after the Holocaust. How horrible it was. Six million Jews were killed and out of that, one million children. And our best... My parents were fortunate in not living in the, a country that was involved from the very beginning of the, the Holocaust. The Nazis did not come into to Hungary until 1944. They had to be wearing the, the stars. They were very much a part of what was happening to people. My mother survived because this group hid my mother for, for several years. They put her in a building, a house, which was very difficult for my mother because she, she had to hide every day. And actually, they, they were very lucky because a lot of other people did not get the opportunity that my mother had. She was thought she was going to be killed any day, but my uncles were very for, thoughtful and caring to my mother. And my father was in a forced labor camp because he was young and strong in the labor camp, would go out every day to do the things that the Nazis wanted them such as building railroad tracks, houses for the Nazi who wanted to use up these young men and then get rid of them. My father was lucky because, and that word lucky is, doesn't seem to mean uh, uh, so my father the reason he survived is because he took the things like cigarettes and alcohol and would trade it to soldiers. And as a result, he was able to trade food, bread, and drink water because they didn't give them any food so they had to go and get it. It was all, all these people who helped my father and my mother survive. The Holocaust made my parents and my other relatives and then hundreds of thousands of other people they made them, for the rest of their lives, constantly afraid that someone will knock on the door and take you away. After the war, my parents lived in Budapest, and they were very much a part of 
what was going on in our, in our country and in the other uh, countries around us. The country Hungary was occupied by Russian troops and they were a communist country. They went along with, with uh, the Russians. The Hungarian people had had enough. They were fed up with being under the heel of Russia and they had a revolution. And it was the famous Hungarian Revolution of 1956. The Hungarians expected that America would intervene and would save them because they had no hope of defeating Russia by themselves. And uh, there was a lot of bombing, there was a lot of killing, and it was a very scary time for the people. And uh, Judith and her parents and the rest of the family were down in the basement when bombs were going off, and then the, um, the Hungarians were starting to gain the upper hand and Russia put an end to it, and they decided to send their tanks into Budapest and crush the revolution. And a lot of people at that time, when the revolution was crushed, escaped from Hungary. They, you know, they, did whatever they could to escape, and it became harder and harder to get out. And by the time Judith's parents and the rest of the family decided that it was time for them to leave because they had to think it out. And luckily, they had something to trade. They traded the big home that they lived in for a number of visas to cover the number of people that were in the house. I think there were nine. They all traveled to uh, Vienna, where they heard that the, the Austrian government was granting asylum to people who were escaping from Hungary. And that's what they did, to pick up and leave your country because you couldn't live there anymore, it's just mind-boggling. And they went to Austria, they were not alone, there were thousands and thousands of people that went there too. The Austrian government uh, put up this big building outside of uh, Vienna called, in a place called Korneiburg. And Judith and her family and thousands of other people were put into this and other camps. And they had to live you know, like 20 or 30 people to a room. They were there for almost two years. And in the United States, it was Vice President Richard Nixon who went to Hungary to look around, to see how the people were living. And he went back to Congress and asked them, would they be willing to bring in the people. If they had someone that would, uh, you know, say that they would take them in, then they could come. And luckily there was another cousin of uh, Judith's uh, parents who already lived here. And then uh, they were able to find their own apartment. Um, my father-in-law was able to get a job. He couldn't wait to get a job. Uh, it was kind of limited what he could do because he couldn't speak the language. And my mother-in-law got a job and uh, she learned to speak a little faster because she worked with people. And uh, Judith went to school in the Bronx, New York, and she didn't speak English. They didn't have Hungarian as a second language <laughs> at that time. so. She sat and kept her mouth shut, which she hasn't done since. <laughs> and she eventually learned the language. And uh, it was a, one teacher that drew her out that started to talk to her and ask her questions and drew her out. And she was, started to speak English, which she could do, you know, just from listening to other people. Uh, it's kind of bright. And... Uh, you know, she went on to have a, a wonderful life and career here in, in America. You know, she went to the Taft High School, went to City College of New York, went to uh, graduate school at NYU, uh, had a master's in social work, became a social work administrator, and uh, I, we'll get into that later. But it worked for them. They got out of Hungary, and they had a life here in America. The life for her parents was never nearly as good as her life was. And she did it all by herself. Thank you. Thank you. And I was very fortunate to have found Jack as my life partner. 
And I'd argue if I could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I decided to go into social work because of my grandfather, uh, because he became very ill. He had lung cancer from smoking. And he w went to NYU to see these wonderful oncologists. And the person who was the lead team member was a social worker. And I, he, she helped us a great deal. She helped my parents because we knew that she was not going to be with us much longer. And I thought that that social worker was so unique and so helpful. So when it came to, in college, making a decision as to where, what to do, I, it was very clear to me that I had to become a social worker, and I did. And it was a great experience in graduate school. I went into social work as a very strong way of communicating to people about how to listen to other people, how to try to understand why people are the way they are. And we did a lot of good work and helped families in the Bronx, New York. And when I graduated, there were a number of things that I was interested in. I was interested in people who, from other countries who needed help. I was interested in learning more about people who were had medical and psychological needs. I worked with children and I became the president of the National Tourette Syndrome Association. And we did a lot of work with Congress. We were able to get people to learn more about Tourette Syndrome. Tourette Syndrome is a neurological illness that causes people to have these, what we call tics, or movements, or vocalizations. When she was with Tourette Syndrome, she also started uh, a program where we had people who were worked in Washington, D.C. to work with uh, congressmen and senators to help uh, them to support uh, programs that funded Tourette syndrome and other rare illnesses and so on. And in my opinion, she actually put Tourette syndrome on the map. I mean, Tourette syndrome was a very small, very you know, not talked about illness. And because she made connections with people who were, uh, who were influ influential, and had children of their own that had Tourette and wanted to help. And I also had a very good experience when I was involved in making a f film with HBO, and it was, I have Tourette's, but Tourette's doesn't have me. It was a wonderful experience. We had the kids teach adults about what it's like to have this kind of an illness but how successful they were was amazing. The kids who participated in this film took a big risk, and um, now we can say that they're Emmy winners. If I may give some background to this, uh, Judith was the president of Temple Judea of Manhasset, and, um, and her very dear friend, Nita Lee, wanted to do something for her parents. Well, uh, the Holocaust-centered concept came to Nita Lee, and we took the rabbi out to lunch, literally, and we talked to him about 
starting a Holocaust center at, at the temple, which is the only Holocaust center in the United States attached to a synagogue. They were very fortunate to have some very generous people who were willing to put up money, uh, but they said, you know, let's see what you could do first. And they had a, a, a couple of things that they did. One of the biggest things was that they wrote to a woman named Meep Geese in, uh, in Holland. She was the one that hid the Frank family, Anne Frank and her family. And she was still alive, she and her husband Jan. And they convinced them to come to America, to come to our temple um, and spend a week there and, you know, they advertised it, and the place was just overflowing with people to listen to these, to meep geese. And, and it yeah. raised a lot of money, and it raised a lot of awareness. And one of the things I remember, someone from the audience asked meep geese, and now an old woman, they said, why did you do it? Why did you stick your neck out? And she said, but well, what else could you do? So if more people had that feeling, you know, a, lot of, a lot less people would have been killed. So anyway, that raised a lot of money. She also brought in uh, a French woman who was a Nazi hunter, and they raised a lot of money. And uh, money came in, and they actually built it. They, I mean, it was an idea, and it came to fruition. And... Uh, you know, it's thriving. And then a couple of years later, a man named Irving Roth uh, took over as the director. And he was just sensational. Unfortunately, he passed away recently. But he built up the center by having all of these programs and having kids from, you know, all over Long Island and other places. And uh, we went to one of these meetings that he had. And these kids looked at Irving Roth, who's this 90-year-old man, as a rock star, he, they <laughs> were, he was just wonderful. And uh, there's a plaque outside with Judith's name and Nita Lee's name, people that helped to build it. And, and that's what Judith was made of. She made up her mind to do something and she did it. And it was a great accomplishment. It, it, it was a, a wonderful experience. And we feel very fortunate that we had the opportunity to do all this. This is an opportunity to teach thousands of people about how we can make sure that this does not happen again. Thank you. <laughs>